Did you ever find Bugs Bunny attractive when he'd put on a dress and play a girl bunny? No. <laughs> no. Neither did I. I was, I was just asking. Okay, okay. Keep looking up. Okay. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Extreme Cast episode 9, or that's uh, IX for you Romans out there. Uh, today's Sunday, March 19th, 2023. And uh, the last time we recorded an episode, it was on Halloween 2016. So it's been around six and a half years. So we apologize for that. Uh, and uh, a lot has happened since then, not with extreme, but uh, with the world. Uh, just to mention a few things. Uh, Donald Trump has been the president of the United States. Uh, then uh, Queen Elizabeth II, David Bowie, Prince and Eddie Van Halen all have passed away. There's the war going on between the two countries, Russia and Ukraine. And there was also this little thing called COVID-19, the worldwide pandemic, which is still going on in some effect, but maybe the worst is behind us. And uh, today we have Pontus from Stockholm. Hello, Pontus. Hello. Hi. And uh, we also have Daryl from Down Under, Australia. Welcome. Hello. Yeah, and uh, Daryl lives now in Australia, he's not in the UK anymore, and Pontus is a Swedish rock superstar who has released three albums with his band Wildness, so congratulations. And I think you were on the same record label that Extreme was at some point, yes? Yeah, uh, on Frontiers Records, so... Um... yeah. It's, it's kind of a bummer that when we got signed to them, Extreme were no longer there. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, at least um, they used to. And uh, like a bunch of other really awesome bands are, are still on that label. So that's cool. Yeah, and I love your music. I, I really like Wildness. It's great 80s rock and roll. Oh, thank so you. Everybody very much. Go, and listen, go and listen to Wildness. In Spotify because it's an amazing band Thank and uh, we also tried to get Nuno Zoe aka Antonio here but he just texted us that he's in the hospital and uh, he's going to see his newborn nephew and he sent us a photograph of him in the uh, elevator so he can't join us today but congratulations on the nephew and uh, I hear uh, the boy's name is going to be Arturo. So, welcome to the world, Arturo. Welcome. Welcome. What a world it is at the moment. Yeah. And uh, this episode is dedicated to my eight, eight month old son, uh, Auno, and to Pontus's little boy, Kip. So, is dedicated to those guys and i hope they will also be fans of extreme someday so. they already are come on yeah yeah i'm I also, a choice yeah <laughs> i'm my, my son likes rice even though he doesn't understand what the world is but he enjoys it so yeah. this episode nine is going to be all about extremes new song 
they finally released something new and it's only been 15 years and the song is called rise And uh, it all started to uh, happen on February, uh, when was it, February 17th, maybe. They released on their Facebook page this uh, picture and a clip of a song. That's probably, we thought, okay, so it's a new song. And once every day they released another clip. And then finally, on March the 1st, they released their new song, Rise. And uh, where were you when you first heard Rise? That's a good, uh, I that's was, a good um, question. I know where I was, actually, because my, my very good friend, Alex, have you met, Auntie? Um, yeah, okay. Um, who were in London with us and saw um, saw Extreme back in? Oh, 20... I met him. Uh, yeah, I met him in the, at the bar. Oh yeah, right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. So where he, else? Yeah, yeah. Where else? Um, <laughs> he was actually the one because I had uh, I had so much going on with uh, with our son and um, like the new life as a parent and everything. And so I haven't really been able to keep up with social media in any regard. And uh, so I, I had totally missed out all of this like cryptic extreme stuff. And uh, Alex was the one telling me, um, like, have you checked this out? And I think they're actually going to release a single soon. So we were talking about it a bit. And then when um, it was announced that they were going to release it, then we decided that we should listen to it together. Um, so we were not at the same place but um we were like talking on the phone and then we were playing it uh listening to it simultaneously at the same time um so that was like a fun thing and that's the sort of setting um for my first listen to rise um so i wasn't completely alone i had my best friend with me as well Okay, that's nice. That's what, about what about you? What about you, Daryl? Uh, I was getting ready for work, and I was in the bathroom, and I got a message from somebody. I can't even remember who now. Over Facebook media, uh, Facebook Messenger, saying, "Hey, check this out. They've just dropped it, the the uh, new single." So I listened to it on my phone, which probably wasn't the best place to hear it audio-wise in the bathroom. But I remember thinking, "This sounds a lot like Velvet Revolver." That was my first my first thought. Um, and I listened to it a few times that day. I'm sure all of us did, right? But um, mm -hmm. yeah, first reactions were a little bit, a little bit mixed. I'm, I won't lie. I, I remember thinking uh, it, it sounds heavier than I remember Extreme sounding before. But in the same token, I didn't quite gel with it at first. That's probably the best way of saying it. Like it, it didn't quite grab me. And then I got to the solo and first part i you know i thought was very eddie van halen like to a t it seemed, seemed like a bit of a homage to eddie which i thought was probably yeah. a nice touch that second part of the solo though where he does the i don't even know what that's called i've got no idea i'm not technical but that just absolutely yeah. blew me away that that took me back to sort of um some of the the solos on um pornography it was that kind of yeah yeah that kind of feel uh, and ever since then, actually, it's just grown on me and grown on me, on me and grown on me. I, I think the mix, I still have a few issues with the mix. I think we discussed this offline. Um, I can't hear drums very well. It doesn't seem to matter what the source is and the bass. Uh, mm. Unless I've got my really expensive headphones on the bass, I can't, yeah, I can't hear it too well. But other than that, I, I, the song's grown on me a hell of a lot and I, I, I really like it. And I'm kind of excited about the album, I'll be brutally honest. Um, more than I was the last one. What struck me the most, though, is is the reaction online to the song, because 
I think when Sal Dodge dropped, um, I know it was an earlier time, 2008. Did we have the internet back then? I think we did. But I don't remember. Um, Barely. I don't, yeah. I don't remember there being too much of a reaction from online journalists, those kind of people. But with Rise, it seems to be completely the opposite. It seems like it's got a, um, yeah, a lot of momentum behind it, not just from the fans, but from other people that have, are genuinely happy to see the band back. So, yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, so you were in the bathroom and I was yeah. sitting on the toilet because uh, I, I wake up 5 a.m. every weekday because my work at the hospital starts at 7 a.m. And uh, I knew that the single is coming, but I couldn't listen to it during the night because I had to sleep. So mm -hmm. when I woke up 5 a.m., I went to the bathroom and I was sitting on the toilet. <laughs> and uh, I listened to it from my phone for the first time. And... Uh, I too uh, had a mixed reaction, you know. I, I, uh, it just sounded so much like "Hurt Smile" to me, and especially the song "Just War Theory." And uh, it, it did sound like it was, uh, you know, "Hurt Smile." And when you, when I heard this uh, solo for the first time, well, obviously Eddie Van Halen, homage, um, and. To be honest, uh, well, we will talk more about the solo a bit later, but uh, as technical as it is, it just seemed a bit aimless. You know, it, it sounded to me like it was uh, recorded in like four or five uh, different takes or sessions or something. It, uh, it, it had too much of everything. You know, when you compare to old extreme songs and Nuno solos, I, I love the build-up, you know, how, how it, it flows from the first note to the last. And it's like uh, the solo of uh, Hotel California, you know, it yeah. grows and it, 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 it's like a living organism. But some for some reason, this solo, as technical as it was, uh, and I we hadn't heard new, really new no solos for like 15 years. But I wasn't too impressed at first. But like yep. with Daryl, it has grown on me the whole song. But I still have uh, the most issues I have with the chorus and with the uh, mixing. Because I agree that you can't re hear uh, Kevin's drumming that well. Uh, you can't really hear Pat's bass. Uh, maybe it's just the way I listen to it. But I've heard it from Spotify and uh, on my phone and YouTube, and I I'm just not a fan of the mix. Are you sure but there the wasn't song... just too much extra noise going on in your bathroom at the time, Andy? Uh, no, I was just getting started, so it was pretty quiet at that time. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, but it, it it's growing on me, and I'm also excited about the new album. Uh, we waited for so long. I mean, I started this podcast back in 2012. And since then, we basically, we've had really nothing. Uh, well, they've had some mini tours and something like this, but no new music. So I'm just happy that yeah. they're now releasing something. And I hope that the rest of the songs on the album will be real killers. Yeah, I'm really keen to yeah. know what Pontus thinks. Yeah, I was just saying, uh, you may have noticed me not going into detail on what I thought about the song. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, uh, and by the way, I just want to say to our uh, listeners, we are going to be honest about this. And I don't think that it's hate talk if someone says that they don't like something for as long as they're being civil about it. If they're being dicks about it, that's hate talk. And we know in the Internet, Today, people are just being dicks for the sake of being dicks. And I was I actually. Think the, yeah, I was. I was planning on being a dick. Can I? Should I leave now? Or no? Sorry. No, no. You can. Be, you can be a dick. Have I'm you seen the film dick. Swedish Dicks? Oh, uh, or is it a film? Is it a TV no, show? Series. Yeah, I think it was a TV, TV show. show. Um, I think I saw like one or two episodes. I can't remember anything about it. So that must mean that it wasn't too good. Um, yeah, so you can be the Swedish dick if you want. I and I will, believe me. Okay. Uh, no, but I was um, 
I had very, very low expectations going in listening to the song. So I wouldn't say that my reaction was um, disappointment, really. It was more, yeah, I had very low expectations. And then I heard it and I remember just feeling tired. It was like, all right, so this is what we're what we're going for here. Um, because it was very, very much the opposite of what I wanted to hear from from extreme um it, it was like really trying to be this really cool and heavy band but you could tell it's like an old band trying to update their their sound and um um yeah so i i wasn't in love with it at all and um and uh i basically felt the first time that this is not I don't think this is good at all. Um, and um, what a dick! I am such a dick. Yeah. <laughs> I know. What Man. a huge dick! I gotta, I gotta work on it. Uh, and <laughs> very much like Auntie, I also felt um, mixed reactions about about the solo. I, I totally agree that it feels like all of the focus it, it almost sounds like at least the first time I heard it um, all of the focus and thought had been put into the second part the part everyone raves about uh, because yeah. that's very well thought out and the first one felt like improvisation um, mm. because the, like in the first the Ed Van Halen homage thing um, it even to my ears sounded like he was playing it in E at, at certain points um, and the, the song is in D it sounded like off key even um, but um, yeah but of course there are these like little like tidbits of like oh that's so Nuno and that was so great to hear something you never heard before um, and um, and the second part that one it's um, yeah very little Jack Horney, I think, and uh, Peacemaker dies. Very the same technique, and it's so impressive. Um, so yeah, we have loads of, of things to say about the solo later and stuff. Uh, but the first time I heard the song, I, I my reaction afterward was like, "All right, that's that's it. Um, that's what we what we have now." And uh, I hope the album is better. But then I I listened to it like many many times and it, it has grown on me a lot as well uh, since um i still feel like it's not really a, a like a song for me it doesn't fit me like a glove really um but it's uh, it's so much better now than than the first uh, times i heard it and uh, i can really appreciate it in a different way now but but i hope it's the it's the star um of the new album like the song star uh, oh, so you mean? Yeah. Um, so I hope it's it's not m maybe like representative to a hundred percent of the new album, but um, yeah, we'll see what the what the album brings us. Yeah, and uh, I think it's a bit. Uh, or let's say that if I was a rock star and I would release a single, I'm not sure if I would release the opening track because i think that rise as an opening track is a bit of a lackluster i mean you have 15 years of no music and there's no uh you know decadence dance it starts with the uh build factory, up in the factory sounds and 
it slowly builds up. You have the long cords and uh, three sides. You have this war thing going on. And I just think that rise, it starts, it doesn't start strong enough. If you think that this is the first album that you're going to hear from the band and it just goes to the riff, you have like eight bars of the riff, then drums, then singing. It's it doesn't feel epic enough, I think. No, but I mean, on the on the other hand, if you if it is the first time you're listening to a band, um, then maybe it's a smart strategy because I bet there are a lot of people who thinks this is like a, a killer killer rock song, um, and maybe also for people who who are not like rock fans in general but like yeah they, they feel like oh this is this is awesome this is heavy and uh, maybe a, a, a build up or a, like an intro or something would make them just skip to the next track um i don't know that's true yeah and i think do you guys think that this is the uh, album version or an edit oh uh, do we I get this be... version or something if they, I don't know what the if they got the, the uh, uh, track they, lyrics on the on Apple Music or anything like that, but that'd be interesting they, to see. Yeah, yeah, they did have the. Uh, they did have the links because, the links. Uh, yeah. as I checked, um, maybe we will get into that also. But there is a song called uh, "Beautiful Girls," I think, right? Yeah. Um, which was, I can't remember now, but it was very similar in length to the um, Van Halen song, Beautiful Girls. So I, I, I have a hope that it's going to be a cover, but I'm not sure. Uh, so I've, I've definitely seen the uh, track links somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I would be pissed if it's a cover. I'd be absolutely Me, me too. Me too. After I this long. All... Yeah. Do you really me... want, do you, you really want Extreme to write a song, write a song called Beautiful Girls? Think about it. It's going to be another homage. King of the Ladies. Yeah, <laughs> I quite like King of the Ladies. That, like, there's two album, two songs on that album I liked, um, and I'm trying two to remember songs. what the other one was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> King, King, King of the um, King of the Ladies and shit, Comfortably Dumb. I quite like that as well. Comfortably Dumb but, is good. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. I'll be watching out for, is, if I'm brutally honest, is more rehashes of previous riffs used and things like that. That that really disappointed me about Cell Dodge was reused riffs from different songs as part of Nuno. Mm. Um, solo projects and I'm I know we've talked about that before but I really hope you don't see that again because I, I want to see something fresh and new and this album's been in development for so long right it, it needs to be there needs to be some really original stuff on it I really hope so but yeah if, there's, if that's a cover which I'm, I think you're probably right I'll be a bit pissed I'm not gonna lie so yeah, yeah. I, I hope uh, that if they're going to release you're, a cover from from any band, the queen it one. should be it should be a separate single or something just you know or a not, not on the new yeah not on the new album i want 100 percent new extreme songs on the new album I'll, I'll give you a positive though i i thought the video was awesome i, I really liked it uh, i know some people won't like it because of the camera angles and stuff but if you look at previous like interface i think and i'm not sure if there's any other videos on the last album they, they had a feel of homebrew about them no disrespect but no, the ladies was wasn't that like a, a like um the backyard party thing that's it very yeah. Yeah. Home thing of the ladies yeah yeah k fix backyard yeah, yeah. wow yeah and yeah then so... they had the uh run video which was footage from oh, right. the J japanese tour yeah or japanese shows uh but i do i also like this video because even though it was probably uh shot in a day or two and it's one location but i uh i really like the feel and the look of the uh video because to me it looks like they're in a church you know the background of the uh uh up Simple. arrow yeah it, it's like this uh uh in the church you have these uh what's it called where the light comes through these color glass windows like, yeah. yeah yeah and and pat has this some kind of necklace that makes him look like a priest especially in this one photo and that's why i commented on it you know father patrick 
And oh. I get this. I'm not a church person at all, but I like the lighting and the energy. It, it reminds me of uh, uh, like the uh, decadence dance video. Mm. For, for yeah. some reason, there's these fast camera movements and the camera is spinning and there's energy in the video. I think. Yeah, I just, I, I like just it. did the girls in the mud bath. Do you remember that one? That part yeah, I, that. yeah, I just missed those that. girls. I, Come on, guys. Yeah. But yeah. what I thought was the, I, I also thought the video was, um, I mean, it's simple, but it's, um, I think it's effective and I, I think it's, um, yeah, I, I like it. But what, what made me like especially happy is that, because you remember, I mean, Nuno has, he has, um, yeah, he is the main man of this like album recording and everything and he has produced it and he has like <laughs> written everything and um i was worried that he was going to be like the creative director also because you remember his uh creep video oh yeah. god yeah <laughs> i mean Those close ups it, it wouldn't be me. it Nostrils. wouldn't be impossible but he he would thought like yeah but we can do this in my backyard you know um, just yeah. get a decent iPhone, and so I'm I'm glad that they put some effort into it and put some um put some money into it to make it look good. And I hope they stay on that track because mm. there are, in my opinion, limits on what Nuno should do and do what and he let other should people hire other people yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, he's a, like he's a he's a genius, right? He's a creative genius, but at the same token, you've got to know when to let control of areas that maybe you don't have the the great the greatest strengths in like uh, yeah. i agree oh. I, I think um sticks of a songwriting yeah kind of playing and guitar playing and guitar playing yeah, yeah, yeah. So forget that one that's quite important if he wants to i i don't know yeah uh, uh so i made some observations about the video so it's uh they released it also on march 1st a few hours later uh, maybe 12 hours later than the single and it it went pretty viral um i have the uh information here somewhere but it took i think 11 days or 12 days to reach 1 million viewers which i think is pretty amazing considering the band is band was band is almost 40 years old and they haven't released any new music in 15 years Mm. And it's basically the uh, us diehard fans have kept the word and the band Extreme alive. Uh, yeah. Well, no, well, you know what I mean. You know. Just um, about. Some, I think. Some, I think our, some our, people our, slipped. Yeah. Yeah. Our pa our patience was a little bit tested at times. That's one of the reasons why we haven't done a podcast in so long. As there's absolutely fuck all to talk about. There's <laughs> no other way of putting yeah. it, right? Um, yeah. I don't want to talk about Sam Smith guitar guest appearances like i have no interest in that that yeah. artist whatsoever i think he should be banished from the world but um <laughs> you know I, i'd like to see i'd like to see them concentrate on extreme for a bit maybe put out some i know there's two there's two more videos coming isn't there is my understanding yeah. so maybe maybe put those out get the album out then do a tour with the new music not just a couple of songs from the album and and the same show that's been going for 13 14 years let's have let's have uh Let's have some some yeah some solid touring of this this album. That would be good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, do you think the, uh, is the song called "Rise" with uh, capital R and lowercase I S E, or all capitals "Rise"? Because it depends on where you're reading the name of the song. It's either way. I think on the uh, Ear Music website, Ear Music is their new record label uh, that's based in germany i think i think they have listed it as uh, all capitals rise and same goes with the album title that we learned is six which i uh, i like the name but also i'm not too big fan of it to be I, wonder, I just wonder what the message is why six why the fucking monkey <laughs> uh, sorry, we'll get that thing. I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, right, so, so yeah. Uh, the new album cover has a gorilla oh. with red eyes, and 
uh, what really bummed me is that it's a stock photo and is it true that even in the stock photo the eyes are red so they didn't even add the red eyes it's or am i, I, I don't think uh, i i think the stock photo is a regular <laughs> Uh, a regular <laughs> grill with no um, no red eyes, but no okay. major other editing has uh, has occurred. I think it's um, very little has been done with that image uh, apart from the red eyes and the, the cropping it, sort of. So it's a very it low a... effort cover. Some serious uh, copying and pasting. Yeah. I'm paying, of uh, course, but I quite, I still, quite, yeah, you have to pay for it. But you know what? I quite like it in some weird kind of way because it, 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 to me, it looks like right. We're back, and this is going to be a beast of an album. I, I agree. I, I went looking for Gorilla's face straight away to see if I could find a stock photo, and bang, there it yeah. was. Um, <laughs> and and uh, but you know, um, I, I quite like it in a way. I just, I just hope that the sorry to did. Sort of um, detract for a second, but I kind of hope that 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 beast theme, that you know, let's go heavy, is a constant across the album, because I'd be I'd be a bit concerned if there was a gorilla's face on the album. There's rise with that heavy riff to start with, and the, it's ninety percent ballads. Wouldn't yeah. you know, wouldn't sit right with me, but um, I don't know. It's growing on me. It's it's yeah. Let's hope it's a beast. Yeah, yeah. And they they also updated their uh, logo. I did a poll. Uh, about a year ago on the uh, extreme cast facebook page and i asked what is their favorite extreme logo and majority said that they like the porno logo best so they have updated it i'm not a huge fan of the uh, stretching and and the gray. my um, uh, my two cents in this and now I'm gonna. Now I'm really gonna be a dick. But this is something that I, I'm. I really, I was kind of pissed about. It's that I don't think the stretching is a, a, a conscious decision. Uh, I think it's been done by someone who doesn't really know too much about graphic design. And I think like, yeah, but we can do this. This looks pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but to me, they just ruined one of the the coolest band logos ever and and it's yeah. such a i mean the original logo is so cool because it's so what makes it cool is that it's so thought through there's a thought behind it yeah. that you can like twist the letters and like oh shit that's that's actually like an e also and it's it's very mm. it's it's very much thought about it and to just like squash it in the <laughs> equivalent of microsoft paint um <laughs> doesn't make any sense to me it's sort of like you know defacing uh defacing it and uh, my suspicion is that all the 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 this like going on shutterstock and picking the fifth monkey head picture and making the logo um updates is a work of nuno as well uh i have nothing to back that up but it feels like i can do that sure I would I be surprised if on the, uh, the CD book uh, booklets it said graphic design Nuno Berencourt. I would Bruno not Gafriti. be surprised. Yeah. And if he watches this and sits back and says, I'm pretty fucking good at paint. What's going on here? I thought it was seamless. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We, we all have if, a go. If he watches this, this, then we're not coming to any extreme concerts <laughs> again. <laughs> yeah. We're not getting them to guest on this show. Never. No. That's it. We're black. We're blocked. We're on the blacklist. Yeah. Yeah. But I do like uh, the uh, graphic design of the word six because you can put all those letters into the extreme logo. Like the S is uh, it's coming from the E and the I is uh, taken from the T. You know what I mean? And yeah. the X is the X from the logo as well. So that I like that they just picked those parts and made the six so that had they needed uh, they spent some time on that one I yeah a, a little so, bit yeah that that i like and so there's 12 songs going to be on the album the album is called six uh it's going to be released on uh, june 9th i think and i created an event 
on Facebook for that date. I have no idea what events even are, but I'll figure it out when that day comes. Something yeah, will happen. I'm, It'll be a surprise. Yeah, I, I'll be on daddy leave oh. during that time, so I might have my son with me when we're talking about that album. And I hope that I can listen to the album on that day. And I'm, Maybe not on the time. I'm, I'm not just spending time on changing poopy diapers. You know, so <laughs> yeah. he, he will have to manage by himself for that time that I listen to the album. Um, I have a question for you guys, actually, if you don't mind. Yeah. Who is Jordan Ferreira and how did he get involved in this album? Any of you guys got any ideas? Done any stalking online? Yeah, that's weird because uh, there have been some guest writers on some uh, songs on Nuno's projects, like uh, Anthony J. Resta uh, co wrote uh, 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 True Love in the Galaxy, for instance. But I don't think there's been any outside help on the extreme songs until now or am i incorrect okay, but this also uh, i was surprised to see that there's another name besides gary and you know on this one and maybe he's uh, like a brother or something of hugo ferrera who played in uh which oh, was it? Uh, it tantric. Uh, tantric, yeah. Mm. Where uh, K Fig also played, at least live, I think. Maybe even on the album. Mm. So they might be related, but I have no idea who Jordan Ferreira is yet. Oh, I'm going to have a quick either. look. Jordan Ferreira music on Facebook tells me that he is an artist who knows. Carl Restivo, who you might remember from Satellite Party. Okay. And he also played, uh, replaced Pat at the 2004 live gig when Extreme yep. played in Boston. Oh, and they God. had this fan jump on stage. Remember this? Yeah. During so the song. And, yeah. That was Carl Restivo. Hmm. Okay. So they know each other. So, okay. So it's a small circle of people being in each other projects, but it, it's still um, it surprised me that there's another name besides Gary and Nuno. Yeah, and we'll see. What do you guys think? Will there be uh, guest players on the songs? I'm not sure, but I mean, it feels like it could be um, because Nuno has made some like collaborations in in the last 10 years or so um and also this whole um what was it called the live um hollywood live thing that he was uh doing yep um i mean there are a lot of like fun collaborations there as well and it wouldn't surprise me if he would or they would um bring in someone or like i don't know backing vocals or something um but um, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, they, there might be some uh, outside help from like uh, Rihanna's live band. I think Nuno made some friends with that uh, live band. Yeah, but I don't. I don't think we'll hear Rihanna on the new Extreme album. Didn't that he would marry? Have, that would be the best. Didn't he marry one of the dancers? Yeah, Rihanna. Christina. Yeah, Christina. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah, and I I saw Christina nice. in London. Yeah, yeah, I behind, remember sure behind I remember the well. door. Yeah, when I was, when we also saw uh, Warwick Davis. Warwick yeah, Davis right. He was driving past you or something, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, especially I mean, in that two Mercedes, it's quite funny. Yeah, it's, can it's you believe like, it's been nine years since that London show? Almost, that is almost that is insane. Years. But I also have to say, like, if if I would, if I would like spot. It must be the hardest celebrity to spot in a moving car. <laughs> if it would have been Stephen I Merchant, saw his I would have, Yeah, like I didn't see someone in the car. It must have been Warwick Davis. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, um, that, that was funny. Yeah. yeah, a bit off topic maybe, but yeah. No, no, no. Uh, no, but he, yeah, I think he is still with Christina, right? 
Yeah, I think I so. Think so. Didn't they? Yeah. Didn't they have a child or get married? I yeah, I think. I think. Yeah, Nuno had another baby. I think. Yep. Yeah, he he hasn't talked about it, so we're not sure about this. But I just have a feeling that they had a baby. So, congratulations to him. He became maybe he became um, a parent again, even older than I am now, because I was forty when I had my son, and he was way older. So, yeah, times are changing. Times are changing a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but, but we were talking about the uh, the capital letters and and rice and stuff, and I just had to say that, considering that, I mean, th there is this song uh, or this track called something hashtag something, right? Brave like, hashtag brave. Yeah, yeah, and and that sort of um, it to me it sounds like they are trying to be a little bit cooler cooler and uh to be a bit conscious also about like yeah but it's an artistic choice to to like have the hashtag before that and then it would make sense to have like in the same vein to have rise in all capital letters to um prove some kind of point or to make the message stronger maybe uh so i wouldn't be surprised if it's all capital letters uh for yeah, that I'm going to, alone. yeah and i'm going to correct myself right away because the song is not hashtag brave brave is the animated movie it's hashtag rebel oh yeah so the track list is uh starting with rise then we have hashtag rebel banshee other isn't that, side of the... isn't that um eggplant emoji banshee did i imagine that <laughs> what? i have no idea what you're talking about i'm thinking about the thing listed song <laughs> uh, then there's uh, uh, track number four is other side of the rainbow. Uh, then small. That sounds like beautiful. a ballad. That sounds yeah, like a ballad. Yeah, it does. It does. Uh, acoustic ballad. I, I can't remember what the uh, photo or the peak was with. Oh, it was the house and the rainbow and the clouds. And I think it could be a piano ballad as well. Yeah, yeah. I I hope that we'll get one piano song because i need some new extreme songs to learn on the piano i think you're on uh, your own there mate yeah i know i want guitars i want lots of them yeah <clears throat> and then there's small town beautiful the mask and we know that extreme had a uh, demo called the mask was it extreme or the dream is it that old Ooh, I want to say the dream because, but I'm not sure. Yeah. But I don't think it's a rehash of that song because their early demos, you can't really take take those and put to 2023. No, I mean, you could try. Van Halen did it, uh, but it, there was a totally different. I mean, you can't really compare, you know, um get the show on the road to simon says or anything like that because it's it's a completely different mm -hmm. style and and i think that um yeah the, the quality of the, those van halen demos were were so good they could have easily have fit on the first or second album um and yeah. extremes demos were a bit more all over the place and a bit more messy um so it, it 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 could be done that they could use something from that period um but it would um, maybe be a little bit out of place in 23 maybe yeah i, I think it's a new song yeah my guess uh, then there's thicker than blood which sounds like it could be from the their first album mm. yeah uh, save me uh hurricane uh, then there's the song called X Out that is said to be reminiscent of uh, Three Sides of Every Story. And this made me think, what do they mean by this? Is it like, does it have a 75 piece orchestra? Does it, is it like Cube is Dead? Is it like uh, God isn't Dead? What, what does it mean, Three Sides Like? Seven Sundays. Oh, yeah, a drum machine and, and uh, 
be something very um, uh, epic or the, like grand. Um, I, I'm not sure. It could be, could be anything. Yeah, maybe um, some strings played on the synthesizer. Maybe something like this. Most likely. Yeah. I think hur I'm, I'm excited for Hurricane. That sounds like a song that's going to be heavy. Yeah. I'm making a total assumption. We've got no idea, right? But it sounds like a heavy song. I hope so. Yeah. Then there's the uh, Van Halen cover, Beautiful G Girl. And uh, here's To The Losers. That's the 12 songs. And that's the one that's dedicated to us, I think. Yes, yeah. that song will be about the boys in Extreme Cast. Yeah. yeah. It must be. They were going to be like, dicks. They yeah. have just put the entire like Halloween episode as one track, the closing track. <laughs> They've sped it up. So it'll be like four minutes long. <laughs> yep. We, we all sound like chipmunks. <laughs> that would be, be awesome. Yeah. So um, let's talk about the song Rise a little more. Uh, give me your thoughts. Uh, I noticed there's some synthesizer at the very end that I'm not yeah, really yeah. sure was it needed for to be there but it it gives a little something extra for the ending and uh, I really have a problem with the chorus uh, when I first heard it I was like oh my god I this is too I'm not I like pop music I'm not saying pop equals bad but within the song it's just uh, the high falsetto uh, that they sing you know uh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. I, that sorry did, did that again, and do it again? I, I, will, I will not <laughs> uh, we can loop it in it, post <laughs> yeah. I'm doing the editing so no no uh, but it sounds really weak uh, every time I sing along I, I'll sing it, you know, ra, uh, 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 uh. I'll sing the middle notes are lower because yeah. it sounds like there's no uh, notes at all because it's so thin and so high. It sounds yeah. like they're singing ra, uh, 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 and not yeah. uh, ooh, uh, ooh, uh, oh. I, I just think it's a weak a chorus, especially. Uh, uh, harmonically like vocal wise I I, I like uh, the guitar and bass parts because Nuno keeps playing the same riff but Pat is playing a different note so it changes the chords even yeah. though Nuno's playing that's the same got a riff. name isn't it what's that what's that called I, I watched the Justin Hawkins video where he talks about it and he gave a really good explanation to what that particular type of there was phrasing or whatever you want to call it, but the, the way that that all works together with different notes being laid over the same alternative riff. Pontus, you might know what that's called, but uh, I think I it's really, it. really works well. It's uh, that uh, I don't know. The, the, the minor parallel is constant and then it changes the bass to the sub dominant. Word. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I used to know this and I used to know this in Swedish and I forgot about it and I don't know it in English. So. We'll yeah. go with that. It's one of those, but it works. Yeah, I think that, that. that riff for me absolutely makes that song. I, I think that's the strongest part yeah. about it. It's so like I, it's it's a really easy thing in theory to play, but to actually play it that consistently through a song, I, like I'm I'm not the best guitarist in the world, right? But yeah, you're not. I've, I it's not easy to play it with that much passion, and I, I, yeah, I really <laughs> like it. I think it's a solid, really solid riff. I hear what you're saying about the the vocals. I really do, um, but I think it's made up for it with that that riff and the bass playing those particular notes. And I actually really like it when the strings come in as well. I think that gives it a a nice outro. And the and yeah. the vocal harmonies on that second part of the solo we talked about earlier. That when the vocal harmonies come yeah, in, yeah, that's really good. I, that that I looked at my arms and my and my my hairs were standing up on my arms. I thought, well, clearly this is doing something, right? If only yeah. um, everything worked quite as well at my age, but um, it was a it was a good yeah it was a good good song overall. I thought. I think uh, that they at first when I heard the the chorus and and still 
really. Uh, it reminds me of, I think it's like, could it be Fallout Boy? Um, yes. In, in yeah. recent years, when they released this, um, is it called Fire or Fire or something? Uh, Um, it's something, it's that general style of music that has been the, yeah, it sounds like it has been an inspiration. Um, I don't know if it's uh, on purpose or not, but but that was what it made me think of when I heard it the first time. And uh, yeah. Um, I tried very hard to forget about Fallout Boy as much as possible because they make me want to rip my ears out that bad and the they vocal, have uh, some, some good songs i like it no, they, no they don't all those no. songs no <laughs> okay you win <laughs> they suck uh, i'm sorry I, it's one of those bands i absolutely cannot stand like who's that teenage angst band that did the great the black parade I forget what they're called oh my chemical romance i think right oh jesus oh, oh doesn't do it for me sorry guys i've got a bit off tangent but no not f I, I got the i unfortunately got the same vibes i also got a bit of rihanna uh umbrella yeah, yeah, yeah. you know that kind of feel um and it was a it was a it was a unexpected artistic decision is what i would say that that particular chorus i thought gary's voice though overall sounded really good considering what is he 61 yeah i, yes. I like it. yeah it it does sound strained but for some reason it doesn't sound as strained as on her smile it I mean, is it, 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 it sounds better some way you know i it mean is. he can't see he, he can't sing those super high vocals from three sides anymore but i no. think especially for these kinds of songs it really suits well it is kind of heavily auto-tuned though uh at least yeah. in, in specific parts um and um yeah so and i i don't know if i can if you can fault him for it or yeah, i don't know um so that's probably why he sounds a bit strange at times um mm. i said strained yeah but strange also yeah. i mean it, it's yeah. um <laughs> yeah strained and strange um yeah. but it's something that i i also notice it's like okay this is um it's quite obvious at times um certain parts of it um i can't remember any specific parts but um yeah there are a couple of of times where you can be like okay that's a very obvious autotune um yeah. they're all at it nowadays though right it seems to be a common thing yeah uh now it's more about the, the like trying to hide it as good as possible and trying to make it sound yeah. as natural as possible they should have bought insure maybe she would have she would have done the vocals pretty well she's mostly all touching, <laughs> yeah isn't she? or what's her name uh the um uh vocoder uh ah okay i i want to say do a leap but that's not the one imogen heap she's, a, she's amazing um, oh i don't know i can't fault you a leap i'm sorry too much maybe or daft punk daft punk yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it also reminds me of fuel do you guys remember fuel oh metallica no uh, no the ba band fuel oh no from the early 2000s they had this hit song uh, uh it was something diarrhea when I, oh. I have uh no not diarrhea hemorrhage <laughs> this is the, this is the bathroom episode <laughs> this what, is what? there's a theme here yeah I, i'm going to google it because it wasn't just the album that's being dropped Hem that way. hemorrhage in no. my hand do you guys remember that song hemorrhage in my hands by Fuel? are you sure no, are you sure it's not diarrhea in my hand yeah i yeah that was <laughs> that was just me <laughs> i want to yeah. hear that uh, it, 
but it did remind me of Fuel and Fall okay. Out Boy. And uh, uh, the opening riff, uh, I like it better when I think of Seven Dust. Oh, yeah. He's playing, yeah. playing a Seven Dust type riff. It For some reason, it works better for me. Yeah, I, that makes I, sense. Yeah. I still got heavy Velvet Revolver vibes. I think there's a Velvet Revolver song yeah. that has a similar um, vocal on the. Ah, uh, you got the, the uh, Stone Temple Pilots uh, one. Maybe that's the one yeah. you're thinking. That's about. it. Not, yeah. not, not, yeah, that's it. Stone Temple Pilots. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's got the Scott Wayland vocal that sounded very, very similar. I yeah, the ver yeah. Sometimes that's accidental, right? Sometimes you get influenced. Um, I don't begrudge it at all. I, I, I'm sure I saw no. a comment somewhere where somebody said it's a bit too close, but no. I don't know about you guys. I, I don't really mind. I, I, I just w want them to sound good. I mean, we all, we are what we eat. Nuno has said that since from the beginning, you know, that yeah. he's influenced by other bands and players and you know I, I don't mind but that no cor chorus uh yeah yeah i, I think those and, um, uh, by the way ha have you guys tried to play that uh chorus riff and sing the vocals because it's impossible no i haven't haven't that, yet. i, I want to see how they will put it off pull it off let's right. try it right because now it, actually no i can't stand up it's impossible I, I can play the uh riff but i can't sing you know one word with it, it it's just i want to see how a, we could make a challenge out of it and see who yeah can, who can yeah. It. extreme cat challenge yeah you can play the riff and sing the chorus and we'll announce the winner in seven and a half years yeah <laughs> when they will release yeah. uh their second single they get a yeah. signed copy of seven yeah yeah, yeah. uh yeah. no but i i am um, regarding like influences and stuff um should we get into the solo or or is that a yeah yeah yeah, yeah. go for it yeah, yeah. because um one thing that that struck me is um during the the first part the eddie homage which is very yeah it, it is pretty much it really very sounds like a Homage. yeah and i think there is even some phaser on the the guitar as well uh which is yeah making it even more Eddie Van Halen-esque but something that that i thought of is that that part is um a little bit reminiscent of the the opening for the solo in the Thin Lizzy song Cold Sweat <laughs> Which has like a, a similar um those punctuations with the drums and stuff um not so much the solo itself but the the actual format of that part of the solo um so i thought that was yeah. fun because lissy is my yeah favorite band i, I don't think it's like a, a something that they thought about it just um made me think of that song a little bit um but like I said earlier, I think that it's mainly the second half of the solo that, that feels like he had a, a very specific thought uh, behind. And the rest was a little bit more, yeah, let's wing it and see what, what happens. Um, it's a great solo, but I, I, I think there are parts in there that couldn't have been like written and intended for them to, to be that way because it sounds too improvised. And I remember hearing it when I heard it the first time, I was like, how did they even think about like trying to do this again live? Um, because like the end of the first, first part where he goes like that, 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 and it, there's this chugging thing that it sounds a bit like filler. It sounds cool. It sounds like a cool filler, but it's, yeah, yeah it, it, it definitely feels like he has his focus on the next part and the first part is just yeah we see what happens um 
and even when he does that, it, it sounds incredible. Uh, so uh, it, it is a really cool solo. Um, but um, I'm also amazed that it has gotten so much coverage and that people are just like raving about it. I think it's, uh, I did not expect that. To, doesn't that speak to the lack of guitar solos in general music nowadays being released? Unless you I go like, so. I mean, obviously wildness apart, right? We're not seeing any killer solos out there um, yeah. in the mainstream anyway. No, but but on YouTube though, I mean, there is like, a, I mean, this whole YouTuber musician um, thing that has been going for 10, 15 years. Um, I mean, people now, you see eight year old kids that are like shredding machines and, and uh, yeah. there is no like, there is no limit to what people can achieve now because you can learn everything in an afternoon on YouTube, basically. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't say at all that there's a shortage in like fast solos or talented musicians or like shreddy guitar solos or anything like that. Um, so that's what kind of surprised me a bit uh, with all of this. Uh, to me, it just shows that like there has been a, a demand for Nuno himself. Like he yeah. is back now, and uh, and that really made me happy. That like people people aren't just discovering him; they are like seeing him return because they. I mean, a lot of people seem to be knowing about him like way more than way more people than I hadn't anticipated. Um, and um, yeah, it, it's great to see him get a lot of recognition um, and people are now discovering like his old stuff and yeah, they're going like, yeah, this is amazing. So it's, it's really fun to see. Um, but I, I've I got didn't a good story about that. Go. It's funny you say that because I, I, I was thinking back a story as a couple of years ago, I've been in Australia now, I think this is coming up five years, second stint. And they have these things called farmers markets. And there's one yeah. 10 minute walk from my house where they have a school and on the school, they have lots of different um, people coming in selling produce and whatever else. And there's this kid that always shows up with his guitar. And I went there one day with my, um, one of my extreme shirts on. And as I was walking along, I heard, I heard him stop what he was playing. And then did the did it did 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 from get the funk out. Oh, and I sort of turned around. Wow. And I was like, oh, and so I went out. I went over, had a chat with him, and it turns out he was, uh, I don't know, 16, 17. Um, it went last time Australia toured. Uh, obviously, he was way too young, couldn't go, even though he's been a fan since he could barely walk. You know, um, mm. and having that conversation with him, I just thought, wow, that there, there, there are still kids that that hear that stuff, that music, and it touches them and it gives them inspiration to go out and perform and then he went on and did more than words by himself um solo mm. in front of everybody there i thought it was really cool so, so to your point yeah that there's i guess what i'm saying is there's a there's a there's a there is a hunger for that kind of music and that kind of virtuosity on the guitar that i think nuno is kind of well positioned to serve i'm just trying to think how many other you know, I'm thinking of people like Richie Cotson. Richie Cotson's prolifically turned out music over the last few years, right? On his 50th birthday, he had a 50 song album. <laughs> That's pretty yeah. incredible, isn't it? Considering all the other yeah. projects he's worked on. But does Richie Cotson have the same uh, audience? I, I'm, not, I'm not so sure because he's, I think he's one of those guys that is exceptionally talented, but he's not a household name, you know? No, um, I mean, there seems to be the gap. Yeah, I think that there are. What Nuno has is, uh, uh, I mean, the Kotzen is insane. He is doing like full sweeps with no pick. You, you shouldn't be able to do that. Um, yeah. But he is like, <laughs> he just decided like, I need this. And then he's, he started playing with his fingers. Um, and yeah, it, it, that's not, that's something you dream about. That's nothing that happens in real life, but he can pull it off. Um, but as talented as he is, I think he has, it's more of the like the, the general picture of a, of a very talented guitarist. What Nuno is doing is something, he has this extremely percussive side to it. Um, he can make things sound Im very impressive in a very different way. It's not, it's not just another fast guitar player. He has these 
very unique things that no one really did before him. Um, so I, I think that's you, you need to have something like that. I mean, if Vito Brada from White Lion would come back, I think it would have the same same effect because he he was also like a very unique guitar player, or he is, but he has been like off the radar for forever, um, mm -hmm. and uh, is not like playing music anymore, basically. So if he would come back, it yeah. would have a similar impact. But um, I mean, some people are. It sounds snobby and and maybe. I don't know, um, demeaning or something, but some people are just very, very talented rock guitar players and you, you can love them, but it, 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 they can not reach that same impact since they, ha they don't have something that's so unique. Uh, and I think Nuno is one of those yep. guitar players that, that have something that no one else has. But of course, fans of, of yeah. every other band is going to say the same about their Favorite guitar player, so <laughs> well, yeah. I'm just surprised that Nuno yeah. does so well considering his obvious physical disadvantages. You know, he's a ugly guy, just oh, good, yeah, yeah, hideous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, it's been fun, and, and, fun um, yeah. To, yeah, yeah, go I on. was gonna say, and a, a small, uh, what was what was the um, the name of the eggplant emoji? The oh, yeah, yeah, we don't talk about that, that thing, <laughs> no, that's sorry, uh, we don't, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about yeah <clears throat> oh, but it's been it's been really fun watching uh all those reaction videos on youtube i mean nuno's on everybody's lips now yeah yeah not 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 that close up i i know what you're close, thinking there close up kind of i know lips, i but, can see you know, i'm still yeah. thinking about the eggplant uh, yeah. I'm thinking about yeah. sexy lips i think yeah i mean he and, does he does push the lips out doesn't he especially when he's recording at home the whole sort of you know that whole <laughs> that's it. Oh, you do better than i do yeah i can't well yeah and you know oh, i don't know definitely. how he's teased but yeah yeah and two days ago rick biato who i love and i've mm. watched his videos for like five years now at least he made a video about the new song and the solo and he really seemed to enjoy it and yeah uh, like he said the next day his that video was number 20 trending on youtube which i think is amazing so mm. it's really nice that uh, nuno and extreme are getting more coverage now with a new song and let's just hope that they'll take everything from this and use it to their advantage and it's not just going to be another saudage that they release the album and then go to obscurity and we'll never hear from them again because this is their second uh, second coming in a way. Yeah. I mean, sure, sure they made a second coming with Sadaj, but Nuno just went with Rihanna so quickly. So you know, but now they have this opportunity to really be a household name once again, and I hope they will. Yeah, they will take this advantage. Yep, and I hope we'll get amazing songs. And the album will be great. And I hope that uh, Pontus will learn to love Rice someday. See what you did there. Learn to love. Almost. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm in the progress uh, or the process of um, of uh, the getting there, sort of. Yeah. Uh, but my son loves it as well. So maybe it's. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's a toddler, toddler yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> learn to think, think like a two-year-old. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm super excited. I, I mean, when I first heard the song, I, I, my first gut reaction was like, okay, I, I don't even know how to feel about an album coming. I'm, I'm, what, am, what am I supposed to feel about this? But now I am really excited. Um, to see what they have and like the next singles is going to be yeah i can't wait for them to to drop um yeah so uh, i'm a, a lot more positive now than the first time i i heard rice yeah, thankfully that's nice yeah. good yeah. and if if you don't like the new 
extreme songs, it doesn't matter as long as you're a part of this podcast. So that's what I'm worried about that you don't like the new songs and one day you'll let us know that you don't want to be a part of this podcast. So we'll, we'll be a part. Yep. Okay, that that's good to hear. Yeah. So maybe we'll release uh episode 10 when the uh next single comes. That would be good. We yeah, preferably not to good. wait another seven and a half years. Yeah, yeah. Six and a half. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. be careful because yeah. I'm getting close to retirement. So I'll be too old to do it at some <laughs> point. Yeah. So it was really nice talking to you, and uh, I hope we'll do Likewise. this again soon. And uh, I made uh, just to finish off. I created this poll uh, on the web uh, Facebook group and asked people what they think of Rise. And I think almost seventy percent said that uh, the song is amazing. So I think it's it's great that majority of the fans are digging it. So I think that's yeah. important. Mm -hmm. Not not everyone is a dick like us, not, no. You know, like me. We, we, but we are. But we, we are being it. honest, and you have to be honest. We we can't kiss anyone's asses because we're never going to get any of the guys on the show anyway. So we have nothing to lose. So we can just be ourselves and be honest and say what we think, right? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. We're not fangirls. Yeah. Much. Yeah, just just the T-shirt, the guitar, and the case, and <laughs> yeah, and I have ex I have my extreme wool socks on, and you know, I've got my k fig condoms somewhere. I can't find them. Please don't find those. No, I don't know where they are. Yeah. So this was <laughs> this was very nice, and we'll return once again, hopefully in the next month, within the next yep. month. So take care, guys, and uh, be be hearing from you yes we are almost at 4k members oh that's so, uh, that's amazing yeah, mm -hmm. that's really amazing so let's make it to 4k and 4,000 members and maybe 40 members know that there's a podcast as well <laughs> and only that four must... of those are gonna listen yeah that yeah. must be some oh, kind of a record that's why the cast is there all right yeah now I get it <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So, see you guys. See you. Take care. Yeah. Yep. Bye. I can't remember how you stopped recording.